One of the great pleasures of working on crochet and knitting is playing with colors and designing combinations as a form of expression. But some of you have reached out saying you have difficulty with this. So in today's video, I'm going to share my five favorite ways of approaching this, along with tips and resources that you can apply while still staying true to your own aesthetic. I want you to see how fun and easy this can be. So let's just dive right in. My first tip is to get really comfortable working with a handy dandy color wheel. Don't worry, I'm not going to bog you down with a lot of color theory. I just want to show you how I use color harmonies to help narrow down colors and ideas. Now, as you can see, my color wheel is pretty well loved and used. I do apologize for the condition it's in, but it's over 20 years old. And I love this one so much because it's very convenient with all of the information right here on the wheel itself. This is still available. You can get it at your local arts and crafts shops in the paint and drawing sections. And if you can't find it there, certainly you can find it online. Another option is just do a Google search for a traditional color wheel and you'll find plenty to choose from. I would just save that to your phone and then you have a quick and easy reference when you're out shopping. There are six different harmonies that you can work with, but the three that I love to work with the most are complementary colors, split complementary, and analogous. Complementary color is just like it sounds. You're finding the color that complements it the best. So for example, let's say I'm working with green. The complementary color to green, I would go right across and we see that it's red. And we know this to be true because we see this all the time at Christmas time. Red and green always go well together. The next one that I love is the split complementary and that's when I'm wanting to build and do more than two colors. Now we're just working within a triangle. Split complementary just means that you pick the color you want to work with. Let's say I have a yellow that I really like. I'm going to go straight down. Here's the complement right here but it's the two on either side of it that make it the split complementary. Another way you could go when you're looking for three colors is the triad. This gives you a little bit more of a bolder palette happening and it's a triangle. So you would just skip three in between to get your three colors. And then for four colors, when I really want to grow this, my favorite go-to is always the analogous. What analogous means is you're just going to take the three or four colors next to each other on your color wheel and put them together. You're always going to have a really lovely feel when you do this. Probably the easiest harmony out there is the monochromatic. You'll just take all the different shades of that color and work them together. So if you're really stumped, uh, monochromatic is always a safe bet. Tip number two, working with neutrals. Neutrals are great for pulling things together or keeping things cohesive. Here's an example with a blanket that I'm working on right now. Now this one, I did not use any kind of color theory or harmonies. I just found these colors and loved them and wanted to figure out a way to pull it all together. A neutral is a black, a white, a cream, anything that's a solid color that you can use like a backdrop. Here's another example where I did the same kind of thing. I had a bunch of colors that I wanted to work with and then just used a cream color to help kind of break it apart and pull it together. Tip number three, sticking to the same values. Here's a blanket that I worked on that there, again, there was no rhyme or reason as far as my color choices. I just knew that I liked them. So I wasn't finding any particular harmonies to go with with this. What I did instead was I tried to pick the colors that were in the same values or the same shade, if that makes more sense. So instead of going, ooh, I want that orange and I want that dark green here. Instead, what I would do is I pick this color of orange this color of yellow, orange, that color of green, just staying on the same line. Tip number four, using your surroundings as your inspiration. Now you're probably like me, you probably have things around the house that you really love, the color combinations, maybe it's your bedspread, like me, maybe it's your mugs or your cups. The next time you go out shopping, pay attention to the different patterns that you really enjoy, what's aesthetically pleasing to your eye. And you can borrow from that and create a palette for yourself with your yarn. Here's an example of this beautiful cup. There's a lot going on here, but guaranteed there was somebody in the background that worked very hard with their color wheel and color harmonies to come up with this because it really does work. And not forgetting the neutral color here. This is really important. You notice they have all this happening, but they picked in a neutral to kind of pull it all together. So I would do the same if I was using these to work a blanket. 
I would also recommend going over to your paint section and checking out the different paint swatches or the different palettes that they create for interiors. This translates beautifully into blankets and projects as well. Or you can go online and do the same kind of thing. Visit somewhere like Pinterest or Google and just search in something like color palettes. When you play with this, you can go right down a rabbit hole. Here's a pretty one here. And then if you just scroll down, you can see even more options. And then just keep playing with this. And this will give you a wealth of ideas of different ways that you could go with your colors. Tip number five, working with a color picker or a color generator. My two favorite places to do this is Canva and Coolers. I think it's pronounced that, it's C-O-O-L coolers or colors, whatever. I'm going to call it cool because it is really cool. So for here, what you can do is you can just kind of look at the different color palettes. If you don't want to work with a picture, you can just play with their different combinations and explore that. Or you can take an image and upload it. And as you can see here, it does all the work for you. So you can get a really good visual. The only drawback that I find with this is that you're limited to four colors only. So this is why I want to show you my favorite right now. And that's over at coolers. So just like Canva, you can explore trending palettes. This is really nice. If you don't have a picture that you want to work with, you can just scroll and play around and just see what's available. Really lovely. Now, again, I'm using the free version of this. If you use the pro version, I think you can save these palettes. I don't bother with all of that. I just stick to the free section here and start the generator. So to get there, go to your tools and then scroll down to image picker. They already have a demo here and what it's doing is it's just pulling from the image and showing you the different colors to choose from. What I love so much about this is you're not limited to just four colors. As you can see here, it has five colors, but you can take it all the way down to two if you like, and you can increase it if you like as well. Look here, you can change the options here. It just goes into different portions of the photograph and you can just play and play with this and just settle on a color palette that you really love. And here you can upload your own image if you like. Here's just a little picture that I had on my computer. I didn't really think anything would come of it, but already it's showing me a really pretty palette. What I love about this is I would not have pulled out these colors on my own. I hope you're as excited about it as I am because I think it's just the neatest thing. So I hope you got some value from this video. If you did, a like is always appreciated. And if you do like videos like this, please let me know in the comments because I really do love creating tip videos for you guys. I always love hearing what you're working on or what you're struggling with. I hope there are some tips here that will inspire you and help motivate you to just play around and have some fun with this. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next time.